Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Catherine Ryan and Josh Whittacombe, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Catherine, which category would you like? Could I have world news? OK, your category is world news and the answer is... 197. What is the question? Is it Dara O'Brien's hat size? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey, that's really hard, Lee. What a way to start the series. That is unbelievable. It's 198. <laughs> is it uh, what are the first three numbers of the decade most Googled by the staff of Operation Utrecht? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On a similar note, is it in fact how many times have the Coronation Street writers had to rewrite the script in the last month? <laughs> <night? laughs> um, sorry. It's very, uh, very quiet in the Rovers' return tonight, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait till the courts throw out. <laughs> yeah. <It'll be> in. <laughs> yeah. Is, it, is it how many pounds did Amazon pay in tax last year? <laughs> Is it? Is yeah, it? fight the power. Yeah. Fight the power. yeah. Is it, um, what is the combined age of Joan Rivers and a one-year-old? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it in fact, how many times did I try and vote for the egg-throwing woman on Saturday <laughs> night? <laughs> is it, uh, how many members of attraction would it take to make a shadow figure of Eric Pickles? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, in fact, how many Findus lasagnas could you get out of this year's Grand National winner? <laughs> <laughs> is it, if I watch any five minutes of Game of Thrones, what is the average amount of tits I will see? <laughs> <laughs> is it, how many margarita cocktails can you make from one pizza? <laughs> is it, is, is it... Have you, have you wondered why nobody comes to your Mexican nights anymore? <laughs> Is it what number Downing Street has Cameron put Nick Clegg in? <laughs> <laughs> it is correct answer, 197. Is it how many baby hamsters can you get in the shoebox? <laughs> <laughs> that is the correct it, answer. Correct answer. <laughs> oh, yes. I will yeah, genuinely give you the right is answer. It, yeah, is no. it? No, it's not. What's my room number, ladies? <laughs> Is it, is it how many intelligence reports have been produced as a result of the PRISM programme? Absolutely, thank you very much, Hugh. Well done. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was how many intelligence reports has GCHQ generated from the US government surveillance programme PRISM in the last year? This is the news that the US National Security Agency, the NSA, has tapped into the servers of nine internet companies to track online communication. GCHQ, the British government communications headquarters, has had access to the system since 2010. Are we alarmed and frightened by this development? No. No. Why, well, why would you be? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, they've tapped into Facebook. Yeah. Who is planning terrorism on Facebook? <laughs> Who's inviting you to the event Death to the West? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe attending. Uh, <laughs> is there... someone stockpiling chemicals on Farmville? That is not how it works. <laughs> there is always a possibility, I suppose, that terrorists have changed their status, isn't there? Oh, no. I went from sleeper to active. <laughs> 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 It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Because people are genuinely worried because the Americans are listening in, right? And they're telling the British about stuff and they're using Chinese technology, so the Chinese are listening in. Who cares if the Chinese are listening to your conversation? It's not like the Red Army are going to turn up on your doorstep going, you've got to stop phoning your girlfriend drunk later at night. You've got to get over that, man. She was Sean now. You've got to respect this. Come on. You can't get out. Like, if it, if it is a crime to look at the Facebook of someone you hardly know, 
I am in serious shit. <laughs> We stood in court with them going, right, now we move on to the album Corfu 2008. <laughs> <laughs> He's nodding as yeah. if to go, oh, I yeah. know that yeah. album. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought I'd had a few views more than yeah. I was expecting. <laughs> one way of making sure that no one's watching you is to present a show on ITV4. <laughs> <laughs> how's, how's that going, Milton? Yeah. <laughs> some, of them, some of them are fine. You can look like, at Facebook. Obviously, everyone knows about Prus issues on Facebook. Uh, Yahoo. I'm sure they're getting a lot of stuff off Yahoo. Uh, Pal Talk. I don't know who they are. AOL. They're still yes. the one thing every so. Oh, somebody was on AOL. Somebody's on AOL. Yeah, they, the they could practice the anything completely. Ring them and go. Why are you still on AOL? <laughs> you know, so AOL are very odd. But Microsoft were one of the first to be. They were the used first in, in 2007. Yeah. Do you think that's what that bloody Microsoft Office paperclip was? <laughs> You look like you're planning a terrorist atrocity. <laughs> you seem to be writing a letter. Would you like some help? <laughs> I'm then I'll send it to the CIA. <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't mind the idea that GCHQ were actually listening to your phone conversations, because I thought it'd be nice if there was at least one call centre in Britain where they gave a toss about what you were saying. <laughs> How did the story come to light? There was a man called Edward Snowden, yes. who is a whistleblower. He blew yes. the whole gaff wide open, man, and then went to uh, Hong Kong. I, I don't trust whistleblowers, cos the last one sent me on a cross-country run with pants on. <laughs> 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 he wants to go to Iceland, doesn't he? He does want to go to Iceland. And do you know yeah. why he wants to go to Iceland? Because Iceland... There's no wonder that people who don't keep mum want to go to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Yeah, the, uh, but he was not employed by the CIA. He was employed by a company to whom the CIA outsource their spying needs. Yes. Yeah? Yeah, cool. Booze, Booze, Booze Alan, Alan Hamilton. Yeah. Booze <laughs> Alan, which sounds like the most unimaginative nickname ever, doesn't it? This is Booze Alan. That's drugs, Phil. And, uh, <laughs> this is getting sucked off behind a Bins Rodney. <laughs> Any other news? What's happening here? Is someone uh, having a bath with inflatable skyscrapers? <laughs> <laughs> Is in fact a whistleblower <laughs> hiding from the world's press. You know, that's what bath time looks like every day if you're a nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. In, in, imagine waking up and seeing that out of your hotel window. You, you'd think, my God, that was a better night than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> in his mind. Do we know what, what it is? Where it is? It's a massive inflatable duck. Yes that has been doing a tour of major cities of the world. It's an art installation. Yes. It's ended up in Hong Kong. What else been doing in Hong Kong? It, it got punctured, I think. It, it did get deflated, punctured, yeah. didn't it? It deflated quite dramatically. Yeah. This is how it looks midway through that process. Oh, oh, oh for God's sake, look grow up! Oh, that's fantastic. That's like oh, a, a genuine... Wait! Oh, no, we'll have read this. We're once on a mock week, a genuine human emotion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the audience reacted. This is how it looks, about, like, the following morning. It looks Look. like um, Eric Pickles has gone swimming and lost his trunks, doesn't it? <laughs> That's a massive... It was. It was. It's, it's an art installation which has travelled the world and it, it got punctured in... It w and it never came here. Um, no. Which would be an awful shame, because lo I'd love to see during the Jubilee, you know, just floating <laughs> in the background. <laughs> that, that really long, boring <laughs> event with there's loads of boats. Fern Cotton is chatting to some Dunkirk survivors going, <laughs> and was it really scary? Uh, and <laughs> then a giant yellow duck just drifts. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do that, though. <laughs> right. Let's yeah. do that, though. Well, I agree with you, I think... We, we need more massive inflatable animals. They could have a, a massive yellow duck on the river. They should have a massive inflatable pigeon at the top of the shard. <laughs> and a massive inflatable hamster on the London Eye. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I feel really sad for the lady who was disappointed to have missed the duck. She said it was a childhood dream. <gasps> What kind of childhood dream? Like, yeah, I'm gonna quit astronaut school and go see a giant inflatable duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think it left Hong Kong when it saw the massive inflatable pancakes and the massive inflatable <laughs> hoisin sauce? <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it's, a sh it's a shame it's left Hong Kong because, as, as a comedian, I think, uh, as comedians, I think we probably all regret not taking the opportunity to go and hear some Chinese people genuinely saying, this duck is rubbery. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, this is not a, that, it's not a, a new story, that one, but, uh, but this is about it. Why has the Chinese government now banned the phrase big yellow duck from internet searches? Oh, it's some really horrible porn you don't want to see, though. No, it's <laughs> nothing to do with duck based pornography. Uh, <laughs> Um, is it a Tiananmen Square thing? Though? Yes, there is, yeah, absolutely, because we just passed an anniversary of, uh, of Tiananmen Square, and in the run-up to it, people were using that image. I mean, that's the famous, iconic image of Tiananmen Square, of the man standing in front of the tanks, which has been variously um, mm. changed on Chinese websites to images like this one. So that... <laughs> Anyways, that's more scary. It's isn't actually it? more frightening <laughs> that the duck would be the tool of an oppressive state. <laughs> right. Apparently, the Hong Kong government were going to vote to see if they could try and feed the duck through the window of a giant skyscraper, uh, but the uh, bill didn't go through. <laughs> uh, at the end of that round, the point is going to Josh, Catherine, and Andy. Now we play around for the Great Gagsby. This game <laughs> involves Milton, Andy and Josh. If you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's have our first topic, please. The first subject is health. Can I have somebody on that? Andy Parsons. That's, uh, that's one hell of a gingerbread man, isn't it? <laughs> According to my doctor, she was saying that uh, I've got an underactive thyroid. She said one of the symptoms of this was lifeless hair. <laughs> <laughs> I said I may have had this for a while. <laughs> doctor said I was borderline overweight. I said surely that also means I'm borderline ideal. said apparently they're using testosterone injections in men to help them control their weight. And I was guessing, you know, if you are full of testosterone, you know, chances are if you do see a donut, you'll rather more try and shag it than eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently bald people, apparently what they're saying in new research is that bald people aren't in fact bald, their hair is just sleeping. <laughs> which is definitely going to come as a shock when Wayne Rooney's hair wakes up and finds somebody else just moved in. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Parsons. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The next subject is parties. Who wants to come in? That's Josh Whitaker. Looks like an exciting party, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I got invited recently to a thing called a traffic light party. I don't know if you've been invited to one of these. What it is, if you haven't been, it's a party for single people. And it is the bleakest thing humanity has ever done. <laughs> it's a party where you go wearing the colour of a traffic light, depending on your availability to sleep with a stranger. <laughs> so you wear red if you're not available, orange if it's a maybe, and green if you have absolutely no self-respect at all. <laughs> I didn't go, cos I'm a driver, I know how traffic lights work, I know how that party's gonna end. It's gonna end with one girl stood in green, and then a queue of men with me at the back, slowly pushing forward, going, please be still green when I get there. <laughs> please be still green when I get there. Also, I, I've, I'm a driver, I, I've, I've driven with people. Uh, when they see orange, they'll just go, well, that's essentially green if I go out fast <laughs> enough, isn't it? <laughs> Who is wearing red to a traffic light party? If you're wearing red, you do not need to go to a traffic light party. <laughs> what are your other options? Turning up at A&E and going, no, I'm fine, I just want to watch the carnage of others. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very it's much, well done, Jack. So that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. Topic is history. <laughs> 348 BC. The breakfast cereal Frosties is invented by Alexander the Great. <laughs> Three hundred and three A.D. St. George slays the dragon with his new invention, the sword. The other dragons offer him all the money for twenty percent of the company. <laughs> Eighteen ninety-six. H.G. Wells publishes the book, The Time Machine. Eighteen ninety-seven. H.G. Wells writes the book, The Time Machine. <laughs> Eighteen 
2400 BC, the Chinese merchant Zhang Zhou, the man who discovered gunpowder, is buried on the outskirts of Peking, Western Shanghai, and parts of Nepal. <laughs> Fifteen seventy one. You have no new messages. <laughs> and finally, three thousand six hundred and forty two AD. HG Wells is born. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done. Point there for Milton Jones. Our next round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of David Cameron recently, but what does C-I-E-L stand for? That is Brian Blessed standing beside him for some random reason. Is it what Cameron had for lunch? Crisps, ice cream, eagle, lilt. <laughs> <laughs> is it just simply, Cameron is entered by Lucifer? <laughs> <laughs> is he going cretins, i.e. liberals? <laughs> Is this why we're so unpopular in Europe? Is it Cameron's interpreter exceptionally loud? <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour! <laughs> Has he seen Boris up on a, on a window ledge? And it's uh, Cameron insistently encourages leap. <laughs> Maybe he's just trying that. to have a nice time. Cameron never has a good day. And he's saying, can't I enjoy London? <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. And then he's doing a musical montage of Cameron <laughs> hanging off the back of a bus, uh, <laughs> putting on a hat. Oh, <laughs> for <laughs> one day, <laughs> I'm in Trafalgar Square, <laughs> spinning around. <laughs> that would be great. Oh, let's, let's all chip in for him to get like a one of those hop-on, hop-off tickets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the C is for Cameron and it's for electability. Anyone know what it is? Couple in ecstatic no. love. <laughs> Let me shout sweet nothings in your ear. <laughs> Clear. Flash. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> Can we please get the correct answer, please? We need to move on. Like Cameron is electoral liability? Yes, I'll take oh. that. Well done, Josh Willicombe. Very good. Thank you. The answer I was looking for was Cameron is electoral liability. This is news for the first time in his premiership. David Cameron is less popular than the Conservative Party is overall. The findings come in a recent poll conducted by former Tory treasurer Lord Ashcroft, revealing disappointment in Cameron's performance and leading some to question his position as head of the party, most notably, presumably, Lord Ashcroft. Um, but is, is this, if, even if people like Lord Ashcroft are turning against him, uh, is this the end for Cameron? Is I don't know. Beginning? What are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> for Cameron to be less popular than his own party, he's like the daffy to his end dubs. He <laughs> is the Terry Katona to his atomic kitten. He's the Justin Bieber to Canada. It's low. <laughs> he also uses turns of phrase like, uh, I have to say, I have to say. Imagine him at home. So, I have to say, this is a really marvellous salad dressing. Do you have to, David? <laughs> Do you have to say that? Are your wife and children being held hostage <laughs> by balsamic jihad? <laughs> so when, when balsamic jihad died, did they get 72 bottles of extra virgin olive oil? <laughs> <laughs> well, how has he fallen out with some of his own MPs in the last one? Gay, gay marriage. Gay marriage was the, the major one, yeah. A lot of Tories aren't happy about gay marriage, which is kind of odd because a lot of them are gay and married, from what I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm all in favour of campaigning for same-sex marriage, but as a married person with young children, I'm more concerned about a some-sex marriage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's going to affect family life. I don't know how. Apparently, if, you, if there are gay people happy somewhere in the world, you just... you know it. <laughs> <laughs> sitting there it. having tea yeah, with your wife. You can hear it in the distance, yeah, yeah. Somebody pounding see. disco beats <laughs> of a great gay marriage. And you know it's somewhere there and you're looking at your oh, wife. I have to get a divorce This is a now, sham! This. this is a sham! <laughs> this whole institute we signed up for is now worth nothing! <laughs> Who is it, No, don't do it, dude! <laughs> 
not much enjoyment of marriage that goes around from what I could tell from when I grew up. Um, sorry, that was a bit bleak. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, but Lord Dealer, the for one of his former police chief, uh, tried to put through a spoiler bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do like the idea of spoiler bill. That is a that's a guy you don't want to have in your life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, one spoiler bill. Did you, did you did you see the episode of Game of Thrones? Let me tell you exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Who invited Spoiler Bill to the party? Really <laughs> <laughs> walking around ruining <laughs> shit. Oh, have you not seen the end of Breaking Bad? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't tell me! That's, I've never Before seen Breaking Bad. Tell me what you get to see in Game of Thrones. 197 tits. <laughs> <laughs> Which Tory Grandi has voiced concern over gay marriage? Oh, this is Norman. Norman, Norman Tebbit, yes. He said, uh, what is to stop uh, me marrying my son? to um, avoid inheritance tax. To which you think, well, probably the fact that you're married to someone already, like your son's <laughs> mother, <laughs> and possibly the reaction of your son, one would hope. <laughs> we are not consummating this! <laughs> I, I thought it was unusual that he would, he would offer up his own son for marriage and without checking with the son was OK with this particular plan. <laughs> yeah. If his yeah. son is watching, you can do better. <laughs> 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 Who are other Tory grandees? Baroness Knight, what did she say? Oh, she yeah. tried to be positive and she said, um, I, I like a lot of homosexuals, a lot of them are into antiquing. No, they, she said they're, they're very good at antiques. Oh, they're good at antiques? Yes, very good at things like antiques. That's, that's the not, uh, there. That's yeah. not how it works. When, when you come out, you don't go, well, I realised I was gay when I realised I was obsessed with both types of Chippendale. <laughs> <laughs> It saves time, though, doesn't it, if you can combine dogging with a car boot sale. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen one of those gay pride marches where they go, what do we want? Furniture. When do we want it? A hundred years after it was made. <laughs> yeah, they, have to, they have to root them very carefully as you don't pass through any really good antique shops because <laughs> the whole parade grinds to a halt. Oh, that is lovely. Uh, <laughs> in that photo, just to the left of her, she seems to be being watched by a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't want gays at all, so she can continue to dominate the drag queen circuit. <laughs> <laughs> the Conservative Party in a bit of trouble, aren't they? Because the average age of their members is 68. And you're thinking, if they have another winter like last winter, <laughs> they'll out of the next general election. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Why Was Britain's Got Talent incorrectly titled this week? Because of the talent. <laughs> All jokes, all jokes about there being a lack of talent exempt Jack Carroll, who's a legend and well done Jack. Uh, oh, but the, uh, the talent wasn't British. Yes, the talent was not British. Imagine that. I know. <laughs> 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 Your visa could still run out, Pat, all right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as could mine. Uh, yes, it was one. Who did the people who won? Oh. Attraction. Attraction. Yeah. Attraction. Hungarian. Yeah. They were Hungarian. Look at these immigrants enjoying themselves. <laughs> the thing about, uh, about <laughs> living want... off our money here. Look at want... the immigrants on the telly taking all our hundreds are onto me. To... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were even staying. They did their act. Uh, interesting. They did their act in Hungary and they did it in a German talent show and they didn't get past the second round in either of them. Do you know what the German one was called? Super talent. Das super talent. <laughs> yeah, das <laughs> super talent with attraction. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Diese Nacht an der Super Talent mit der Singles unter der Dancer <laughs> und der Funky Time. Uh, <laughs> what event overshadowed the performance? Oh, it's just so, oh. Simon Cowell being hit by some eggs. Yes. It's a shame that they weren't still in the delivery lorry, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or, or in the chicken. That'd have been particularly good if you had to egg him via a chicken uh, at the set. He quite extraordinary, isn't it? A woman throwing her eggs at Simon Cowell. That is a great act of optimism. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of that round, the point's going to Chris Hewitt and Melton. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what a panelist can come up with. <coughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is... <laughs> Me. Unlikely lines from a cosmetics commercial. Do you want tighter, smoother skin? Why not try getting fat? <laughs> <laughs> For a rich, all-over tan, get into a bath David Dickinson's just got out of. <laughs> Do you suffer from low self-esteem? Feel like a failure? Think you can't go on? 
then take 200 Nurofen. That should do the trick. <laughs> Maybe she's born with it. Maybe she got it off that guy in Ibiza. Now, Daphne here is wearing a lot of concealer. Daphne? <laughs> What's my secret? I murdered my first husband. <laughs> <laughs> One thicker, full of lips, then try telling a nightclub bouncer he's a twat to his face. <laughs> <laughs> Clinique. Because clinic reminds me of chlamydia and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this eyeliner really works. And it tastes good, too. <laughs> That's why we call it chicken tikka mascara. <laughs> I'm Dean Gaffney, and I'm worth it. don't test any of our products on animals. We use Filipino children. <laughs> <laughs> Is your man hairy all over? Then why not try head, shoulders, knees and toes? <laughs> <laughs> New anti-wrinkle cream for men. My scrotum has never felt so small. <laughs> <laughs> For the most relaxing bubble bath imaginable. Why not have a little cheeky wank when you're in there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you dream of longer, fuller lashes? Then you should try re-evaluating your priorities. <laughs> <laughs> Sweaty from the tube, frizzy hair from the rain, black snot, she's got the London look. <laughs> <laughs> Three steps to a better skin. No crisps, no chips, no burgers! <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on Doctor Who. <laughs> when, when I was giving you a quote as your cleaner, Doctor, I was giving you a quote from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> No, there, there, there isn't going to be a new doctor. I'm being replaced by a helpline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is the last time we park the TARDIS outside the port at Glastonbury. <laughs> <laughs> Davros, we meet again. Oh, Lord Sugar, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hey, saw you from across the TARDIS, and I think I regenerated in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, Doctor, you must help me. I think I'm a pair of curtains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tragic news about the Ood. There's been a terrible flood. They tried to escape into the wood, but it didn't do any good. And now they're all dude. <laughs> no, I'm the doctor who works for the World Health Organization. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mainly hang around young women. Yes, I was on television in the 1970s. Where are you going with this? <laughs> You've got to believe me, Clara. This is our best chance. Now, unzip my flies and I'll explain later. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go forward in time by an hour. Then we get a quid off the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first thing to remember on Planet Xenon is turn off data roaming. <laughs> so... <laughs> we are ten million years in the future. H.G. Wells has just got married. <laughs> <laughs> you are the doctor. I am the tracheotomy patient. 
I am the doctor. I am 1,200 years old. And this is my assistant, who's 27. <laughs> Josh, and, Andy. and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Pat and Ryan and Josh Whittakam. Commiserations to Chris Allison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. Thank you for watching. I'm Daryl Green. Good night. And Mock the Week is back at the same time next Thursday with guests Gary Delaney, Miles Jump and Nathan Caton.